Well, hello and welcome to this episode of Church at Home uh, for the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. Father Ed S. Doc here. Father Michael. And Jim, the pastoral intern. It is uh, good for us to be here, and we are in a new season of the year, uh, having concluded the Christmas season on Monday uh, with the baptism of the Lord. Uh, we have now moved to the first Sunday, if you will, well, in ordinary time, although we mark it as the second. And um, we have been reflecting on the fact that uh, this expression of John the Baptist that is presented to us from John's Gospel um, really is a pivotal... What is the, uh, what is the oh. phrase? The phrase is, of course, behold, the Lamb of God. And so it's a pivotal uh, phrase in our uh, Catholic spirituality, our Catholic liturgy. And uh, so we were talking about it. And, so, and it's, um, it should be very familiar to you because you'll hear it in every Mass. So that means it's said in a very particular way by the church every single day, uh, except on Good Friday, of course, but that at every Mass, every day, so this line is being said that comes right from um, this, the Gospel of John and John the Baptist. So in a way, the priest is sort of, while well, he's in persona Christi, he's um, repeating the words of John the Baptist here as he presents um, now the consecrated Eucharist to the congregation and says, of it, behold the Lamb of God. And uh, when we were going over this, Father Ed pointed out that, you know, we don't say, uh, behold the bread of life. Because that's from it, John's gospel. Behold the, the Eucharist. Life. All of these right. things would, which are true, right. uh, but we very intentionally say, behold right. the Lamb of God. Right. And uh, so uh, then we say, well, what is the church and what is God telling us by this? Um, in, uh, Jim was admitting that it was a few years ago that, this kind of struck him, mm -hmm. and uh, and what was the uh, issue of the that you put together with the Lamb of God, the Lamb and, of God, and the Lamb of Sacrifice from the Old Testament. In fact, it's the very next line in the Mass: "Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world." Okay. So okay. every year you would go up to Jerusalem if you're a good faithful Jew, and you would sacrifice a lamb to take away your sins. Right. Yeah. So uh, so. What we were kind of concluding is that uh, this uh, name, it's almost a nickname that John the Baptist is giving to Jesus because, you know, Jesus was fond of that, or at least he was, it was of his habit. He would give somebody a new name uh, depending on, I think, the role or the mission that he was uh, bequeathing upon them or bestowing upon them. So, for example, uh, Simon uh, was renamed Cephas or Peter uh, because you're the rock. So he was the foundation stone, and actually his faith was the foundation stone. So um, I was concluding that, well, it seems like John the Baptist is not only uh, is giving Jesus a nickname, and the church has picked up on it, and in that nickname he has revealed what the mission of Jesus is, and that is to uh, be sacrificed. So he is the sacrificed one. And as Jim pointed out, uh, we understood from our Jewish roots that uh, sacrifice is offering uh, and growing close to God uh, by laying down a life and um, especially the blood of the life uh, because that's where Jews recognize life existing is in the blood of the animal and of course we in the blood of Jesus so so um, this has become uh, maybe a question for all of us uh, is to um, how much is sacrifice, how much do we identify with sacrifice as far as our uh, 
Christian lives? Would anyone call you or me a, a lamb? You know, behold, oh, behold, Father Lamb. <laughs> uh, well, what would be necessary is, I think, is that people would see in the witness of my life is that my life is a sacrificed life. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, but often when people think of sacrifice, they think of like giving up drudgery, that kind of thing. This is more out of an act of love right. rather than you know, something right. to be endured. Right. So in a sense, uh, we know this from the marriage right and our theology of marriage, well, and everything, uh, that we get it from the Eucharist, we get it from Jesus. Uh, there, you really cannot sac uh, separate, excuse me, love and sacrifice because the only true love is a sacrificed life into your point about would somebody look at me and my example and say behold the lamb of god i mean like do you recognize a life of sacrifice in in me and in, in another person it's like as the disciples of jesus how much are we conform to him how much are we following that example right. following along with the gospel of john from which all all of this is coming at the end, he's going to wash his disciples' feet. It's this life of service. It's this sacrifice. It's this act of love mm -hmm. that, um, that we're called to follow and be examples of. Um, so I think a life of service and a life of sacrifice is um, very essential in a life that's, that we think is configured to Christ. And mm -hmm. so people would see that in us. Right. Would, would they look at that at our example and say, you know, yeah. behold, another another Christ, behold the Lamb of God, behold somebody who is um, acting on behalf of love for God and others. Right. Yeah, and you know, you brought the washing feet, and I think the line in there, isn't it? Um, as you have seen me do, then yeah. you do yourself. Oh, so yeah. those brothers. Uh, right, I think uh, this comes to my mind uh, so often when I'm celebrating uh, the uh, funeral mass of a uh, good and faithful uh well, I'm thinking of good and faithful husbands um, uh, because people will oftentimes say uh, that he gave everything for his family. You know, he, he, he sacrificed everything. It was nothing about him. It was all uh, for, my, for his wife and for his children. Um, so oftentimes people say that and for the church, you know. He uh, he had a life. He lived a life that was poured out for the sake of others, and that's that's what we call sacrifice. But it's also what we call love. And uh, so uh, this is not a strange question. Um, to what extent we write, I should say, uh, are, do others see our our lives and our witness as a sacrifice, intentional? Uh, laying down of our lives for the sake of others. I think that's Thomas Aquinas' uh, definition of love. And uh, um, it might be a good standard for all of us to um, behold. So uh, uh, every Mass now, you're going to hear us uh, behold the Lamb of God. And you may have wondered what that was about. I hope you know. Now you know a little bit about it. And uh, we keep learning about it ourselves. So uh, let's... Uh, model our lives upon the Lamb uh, who is sacrificed for our sake and uh, we are called to sacrifice ours for others. Take care.